Yo, what is going on people and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to actually create a Livonia server. Now, you will be able to follow this tutorial if you do want to change Genaris. I'll also be teaching you that in the meanwhile while I'm doing this video. So, the first thing that you need to have is Steam. Most of you will probably already have this, so you're perfectly fine there. Now, if this tutorial did help you out, please, 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 please do leave a like. Also, if you're watching this and it did help you out, please leave a subscription. 40% of people are subscribed to me, and then there's like 60% that aren't. So, please do leave a subscription on that. And also, if you do fancy checking out a PvE server, the guy who's lent me this dedicated server so I can actually make this video for you guys, Ragnarok, make sure to go and check that out. I will have a link in the description for you to head over there. Just join the Discord. You don't even have to play a server. Just be a nice fella and join his Discord. So firstly, you want to make sure that you've got Steam installed, and this is my Steam. What you then want to go on ahead and do is you want to click this button up here, Games and Software, or yours might just say Games, and you want to enable this Tools icon here. Now what this does, it allows you to use all the tools that the games provide. So as you can see here, I've got 7 Days to Die, and also with 7 Days to Die, you get a dedicated server. So now we need to find DayZ server. As you can see, it's here. Install it where you want. If you've got an SSD, go and install it to your SSD. Trust me, that's a lot better and it's going to be faster for your server. But for this time, we're going to install it into the C drive. So you're going to click next. You know how to install a Steam game as you do play DayZ. You're just going to wait for this to install. And once it's installed, we can head over to the next step. Now what you guys need to do is you need to actually search up in the search bar windows defender firewall and then something like this will pop open now for you guys that are actually doing a server at home so you're running the server on your own pc sometimes there's some websites that allow you to port your router sometimes you've got to call up your internet provider to actually port it but for you guys that are using dedicated servers or vps's this is what you need to go to and sometimes it does work when you're at home doing this but sometimes it doesn't but it should 100% work if you're on a VPS or a dedicated server. So what you want to do is you want to click this and you want to click this. This says new rule as you can see it is in German and we don't understand German but it's fine we can make it along. We've got this button here that you need to click which is port click next and what you need to do is here is your number of the port so we're going to be porting today to 2301 normally you guys should do 2302 you guys should do that that's like one of the default ones but there's already a server running on this server so i can't use the same port or if you guys want to you can click all ports here and then you don't have to click this number but we're not doing that. So we're going to click next. Um, next. Next. And here you give it a name. So we're going to call this Matt1. And then that's done. Perfect. This time we want UDP. We're going to type in 2301. We're going to click next. Next again. Next again. And then here we're going to call it Matt2. We're going to finish that, and then we're done on that. Perfect. You're done with this little area here. Then we're going to click this button here. Go to this up here. Where it says port, we're going to click next here. TCP, and then we're going to type in our port. So 2301, next. And this time it will go here. So what we want to do is we want to put it up here. This is basically blocking the port. So we want to make it go up here. And then click next, next. You get the gist. And then call this Matt3 or call it whatever you want. Call it Dizzy Server Prep. Then we want to click this button again. We want to go to port, next. This time UDP. We're going to type in our port, next. Up to the top again because we don't want to block it. We're going to click next here, next here, 
call it map 4 or daisy server 4 done and then guess what guys we're finally done with this so now we're going to move on to the next step now your server is ported so you should see it on the server obviously once it's all set up and it's no longer a LAN server now what you guys want to do is you want to head over to where your Dizzy server is installed. So mine is installing program files 86, Steam, Steam apps, common, Dizzy server. And I'm going to be linking down below in the description a zip file for you to download. And once you've got that, you will be provided with this start bat. Okay, I want you to drag the start bat into this folder here. And to enable the extensions to make sure that it is a bat, what you can do is you can go to view, file extensions, and now as you can see it is .bat. Now if you have a different server port like I currently do, in the port section here, you want to make it so it's 1. Or if your port's 2456, you need to make sure that here it is like that. But most of you guys should be using 2, 3, or 2, and that will be the same here. So once you've done that, what you need to do is give it a save. And basically, this is launching your Daisy server 64EXE. So you're perfectly fine with that. Now you need to head over to the Daisy server config. Now I will provide you guys with one just in case. This doesn't actually provide it you when you download the DayZ server. So what you can do is right click it, edit in Notepad. I prefer Notepad++. And as soon as you get this open, we've got all this here. It's a lot to take in, but I'm going to explain it to you all. So where it says host name up here in the top is basically the display name that you will see when you're joining the server and when you're actually trying to find the server so here you want to put your server name make it something professional but because I'm making a test server I'm gonna call it Matthew test and then just control s and save that now here is a password and that's simply a password to get on the server. So we want there to be a password on the server because I don't want other people to be joining this server while I'm trying to play it myself. So I'm going to put a password as 123. If you guys are making a public server and you want people to join, you are not going to put a password here unless it's a public password and it like says it in your title's name or something like this. Now in the password admin, you're not allowed to tell anyone this. This is just for you and your admins. So in here, I'm just going to put a lot of gobbledygook. And that is the admin password, which only I will know. And if I need to become the admin, I can log in with this. Now, if you want your server to be whitelisted, you're going to put one here. But like I say, we are making a public server. So we're not enabling whitelist today. Now the max players, if you have a dedicated server, you can have as many players as you want to Daisy's limit, which is 120. But you've got to understand that depending on the specs of the server, sometimes you might only be able to manage 30 players. But for this, we're going to keep it as a solid 60. Verified signatures means that you're gonna have to have signatures enabled if you don't want other people joining with random PBOs. These PBOs could be, let's say, hacks or extra server mods, or say someone might be able to drive around in a Lamborghini or something like that, but actually on your server, you don't have that enabled. So if you do make your own custom mods, I'll have a card up on screen right now, you can actually create signatures, and you need to keep these on. To disable signatures, this too you will replace with a zero but because this is a vanilla server we are going to keep the two there now the four same build tells you what it does here when enabled the server will allow the connection only to clients with the same exe version as the server so say i'm going to play this server with an outdated version i've got an outdated daisy if this is one then i will not be able to join the server now, enable and disable VON is here, so to speak and all that lot is, there's different numbers here, yep. 
in Von Codec Quality is 20. But I want people on my server to be crystal clear. So I'm going to make it third to the max that Daisy can do. You can make it five, and if you don't want anyone to speak, you make it zero. It's pretty self-explanatory there. You've got the disable third person and disable crosshairs to toggle these on and off. Zero is on, one is off. Disable personal light, so it disables light for all clients that connect the server. Light config, zero for bright at night setup and one for dark at night setup. No one likes Daisy's really pitch black dark. I don't personally, I don't think a lot of people don't. So obviously you've got that there as well. Now we don't need to know anything else really in here. You just keep it there. But if you want a Chinaris Plus server, what you've got to do is where it says template, it must be Daisy Offline Chinaris Plus. If you want the DLC, which is Livonia, you need to make it daisyoffline.enup. So we're going to copy and replace this text here. Make sure you have the speech marks around it. If you have something like that, it will break. So you need to make sure that you have the speech marks there. So then what you want to do is save that. Perfecto. Make sure that you have the missions in here, which you do. You have the Livonia and you have the Chinaris Plus. Now we are ready to go. What I want you then to do is just double click this, wait for Daisy server to load up. As you can see, it is now loading up. It's reading the mission. So all that you now have to do is you have to jump on your PC, load up Daisy, and then connect to the server. I'll see you in a minute. Right, so once you have the Daisy launcher, make sure that you've got all your mods enabled, your command line, make sure that is unticked if you do anything like that. Go to servers, click the direct connect button here, this is what I'm going to do, I've put my password 123 in, I've got the correct port, I've got the correct IP address, now I'm going to click connect and we're going to wait for it to load up the lovely Daisy Livonia server. So, here we go, we have now a default vanilla Livonia server, you can run around, you're spawning with a glow stick, um, and a bandage, so that's pretty epic, you know, glow stick away, brothers. So yeah, this is how the server works, everything works on it, and I'm going to jump in back to the dedicated server, because I do know a lot of you guys want some mods on your server, I know that 100%, I know it 1000%, that you guys want mods on your server, so I'm going to tell you how to set up mods on your server, I'll see you in a minute. So if you guys want mods on your server, what you want to do is you want to go to the port part, press space, and then here you go, mod, at inventory plus. The at inventory plus is obviously finding the folder. Now if you guys don't actually want mods, then that's it. But if you what you need to do, and basically all that you need to do to get mods working is you need to make sure that you have, let's say if it is inventory plus, you need to make sure that you've got the at inventory mod in your Daisy server folder. Thank you all so Leave a like on this video. Leave a sub switch if you are interested in me some Daisy, me doing some mapping very goodly. And see you later. Adios, amigos.